And for a little bit of morning humor, whenever you play with your batteries, always wear your battery pants. Okay, good morning there, friends and YouTube subscribers. Uh, I noticed this weekend, I think it was. I don't, rem I don't remember. I've been so busy. Uh, taking a peek at my batteries, and back on uh, December 12th, according to my notes here, I refilled all my batteries. Now, I want to show you the problem I'm having. First, I want to talk about checking the voltage this morning. These have been shut off since Saturday night. This battery here is at 619, 624, 630, 629, 618, 624, 625, 625. Now, interestingly enough, here's uh, the first battery in the string. Here's the second battery in this string. That one's reading 6.19. And then they go up from there towards the last battery seems to have a higher value. Over here, we have the first battery. Then we have the second battery. And the third battery here seems to have the lowest value, is 6.18. And then 6.24. And 6.25. So that's not terrible. You know, that's uh, the low battery of the bunch is uh, 6.18, and the high is 6.30. Uh, so, you know, we're talking hundreds of a volt, not, not a whole lot. Here's what I found interesting, and I noticed this starting to happen about a month and a half after I hooked up my battery extra battery desulfator. And at the time, I thought it was a battery issue because at the time, see these batteries with number four on them, they're the newest batteries of the bunch. These were all purchased with about within 10 months of each other, all of them. Inside the batteries, I noticed that the negative cells, hopefully we're picking this up, started to grow. And this is kind of hard to film in here. And some are worse than others. Let's see if I can find and again, see? Hopefully I'm catching that. Look at the end. Look at the end cell on this one here. It's incredibly overgrown. Yeah, those are the negative plates, the gray plates. Now the positive plates, which are down lower, are nice and clean. together. Now these batteries are set, I believe, at the second recommendation in my Outback uh, charge control manual. They're performing fine, no issues with performance. It's just they look crazy inside. And again, I hope I'm catching this. It's very hard to film this. Maybe that's a little better. Look at that. I don't know what. And again, I'm doing the best I can here. It's hard to tell with the camera. Hope I'm catching it. And again, look at this one. Crazy. The plates have just grown together. And again, I suspect it's got something to do with that desulfator because I never had this issue until I hooked up the desulfator. And I am going to contact the company and I'm sure they're going to say they had nothing to do with it. And you can see this battery here has got some gray over the positive plates, but not over here. I just think that's wild. I definitely don't believe that's normal. Anybody with a reasonable answer that knows what they're talking about, please leave a comment. And I'm sure I'll get my usual trolls with their stupid-ass comments. But 
that's what you get when you have a channel. So anyway, anybody has any idea of what they think is causing this? And again, they are running fine, no issues with the batteries. They just they just don't look very well inside. And again, I'm trying to do the best I can to show you this. It's not easy. see it like that I hope that's pretty wild and one thing this last six years of playing with lead acid batteries has taught me is I'm all done buying flooded lead acid batteries I'll never buy these again my uh, AGM batteries I put in my solar camper they've been in there now about seven months I set them according to the factory specs on my uh, EP Solar 4215, which has been absolutely flawless, no issues whatsoever. And I had to do absolutely nothing to those batteries, and I lived in that camper again for almost two months of this year. Never failed me. They perform flawlessly. And you don't have to do anything. No water, no equalization, no maintenance. Just one less thing to worry about. And again, these batteries are still performing well. They're about two and a half years old, maybe a little more. But you're looking at $2,000 here in batteries, and I'm not real happy how they're going. So when I do make my move, these obviously I will use them until they play out. But I'll never buy flooded batteries again. I'm done with flooded batteries. A while back on uh, Craigslist, I had an opportunity, and I can't think of the name of the batteries, I had never heard of them, primarily because they're super expensive, and they're made for uh, like big telecom companies, and they were, some of them were 2 volt cells all bolted together in a big steel case, and some were 6 volt cells bolted together in a case, and they supposedly had a 15 to 20 year lifespan on them. Another reason I didn't buy them was, I think each battery was like 840 pounds just insanely heavy, which was definitely more than I could handle. Anyway, that's getting off topic. So if anybody got any idea why these batteries are looking so crazy, I'd like to hear about it. I don't think that's normal. I've never seen a battery do that before. All right. See, here's one of my older batteries, and this one isn't that bad. I don't understand why some do it more than others. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. It's getting long. That's my solar battery bank's latest dilemma. Thanks for watching. I'm out.